Ladies and gentlemen, this is the encourager with just another quick study with you. I'm hoping and hoping that you will dive in, you will pick up the instruction manual and study along with me. Come along. There is much to be learned and um, the only way you will know is if you read the Bible in order for you to understand the world, your world, and yourself, and just to see how everything fits together. And therewith, you will understand the season that we are in. Today, I'm in the book of Exodus, and I do have a title today in the form of a question. The Holy Spirit revealed this to me a few days ago. Um, forcefully and here's the question is this not Egypt is this not Egypt this that I'm referring to is the world globally is this not Egypt I'm speaking on this bearing in mind thinking of the the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes of Jacob, and the plight they went through, and how the Lord led them out of Egypt by the hands of Moses. So, is this not Egypt? Looking around at everything that is happening. I kid you not, we are in Egypt. I would encourage you to start in the book of Genesis and you'll see the birth of the tribe of Israel. Like many pastors or teachers do not teach about this. They don't, I, I don't know if it's because they don't understand it or they refuse, but there are many pastors that do not teach this. They just skip over the Old Testament and just run to the New Testament. And we do, the Bible is our instruction manual. If the Old Testament was not important, we would not have it. It's the foundation. It's the grounding for everything and there are prophecies in the Old Testament that are yet to be fulfilled and are being fulfilled even as I speak so again my question that I pose to you is is this not Egypt and I refer to Exodus chapter 1 simply because you will see the um, the tribe, Jacob's tribe there, or Israel's tribe. Again, Jacob and Israel, they're the same. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. I'm not speaking of the geographical location. I am speaking of the people, Israel. Okay? And you will see in every book in the Bible... Israel, as in, and many misunderstand and look at the geographical location rather than looking at, looking at and for the people that are the tribes or the descendants of the tribes of Israel or Jacob, because they're used interchangeably in here. And many times they're confused with the geographical location and the actual people again you will have to get in the bible you will have to read and study to see many get discouraged because they'll pick up the bible and they're like oh i don't understand and rightly so but as i've said in previous um posts or videos that i've put on here there is a one revealer that reveals and 
um, unravels the scriptures to you. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He gives the revelation. He does. So do not be discouraged. And because of the discouragement, many are going to be lost because many throw the towel in and say, oh, I just don't understand it and it's not for me. And you do yourself a disservice by not engaging and seeking the Lord Jesus Christ to give you the revelation. So again, is this not Egypt that we are living in today? Because I kid you not, once you start to read the Bible, your eyes will open and you will see that this is indeed Egypt. Of course, everything is compartmentalized right now. You have Canada, the US, the Caribbean, the continents. You have all those um, sectioned off. But on a whole, I am telling you that we are in Egypt. And this ain't a, a spiritual Egypt because there are many groups that will say, oh, this is spiritual Israel and spiritual. No, this is real. This is real. Okay. So in Genesis chapter one, you will see, I mean, you have to literally read it yourself because I'm not going to read it because of time and to just dissect it. I'm pointing you to go to Genesis. You'll see how the tribe is being born and how everything flows together. So here we have in Genesis chapter 1, when Jacob's descendants, they all moved to Egypt because back in Genesis, you'll see there was a famine. You will see how his younger son, Joseph, was sold into slavery. And um, he's in Egypt and eventually they all ended up in Egypt. Okay. And for some time, they were living well, doing well and um, in abundance. They were multiplying and all that wonderful stuff. But then as you read, you will see where the tables have turned. Okay, so they're living in Egypt and they're free. But then the tables turned and then they're in bondage. Okay, so here they are living a wonderful life in abundance, much food, They've, they had land, their livestock, and they're doing great in the land of Goshen here in Egypt. And then I'm in, I'm in chapter one, verse eight through to um, verse 14 speaks of a new king for Egypt. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And well, in a nutshell, um, they became afraid of the Israelites, of the tribes. They became afraid because they were like, oh, they are strong, they are mighty, they are growing. And if we don't do something now, we are afraid that they will overpower us. And therefore, they brought them under subjection, or perhaps I should say, they made them captives. They made everything difficult for them. They made labor hard for them. So the freedom they had was literally... Um, taken away from them and they were now let's just say it slaves but the 
pharaoh that was in charge then this new king he wanted to let's say diminish them so the labor that he put on them was super hard but it didn't matter what pharaoh did these people excelled and they multiplied and they were strong they just grew stronger and stronger okay so they went in free they lived wonder wonderfully and then things just turned but again you'll have to read from the beginning of genesis all the way over to clearly see what is happening i literally just want to drive home a point that we are again in egypt and this is happening and if you study you will see now i'm going to jump down to verse two well i'm jumping over to let's say chapter three because the children of israel they're in their plight and things are tough with them and they're crying unto god and god heard their cry and he is sending Moses to deliver them. So verse 19 of chapter 3 reads, And I'm sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, not by a mighty hand. Um, this is um, God speaking to Moses. If you read a few verses over, you'll see the con you'll you'll see the complete conversation that uh, moses is having with the most high and the most high has said well his heart's going to be hardened this is not going to be an easy job yet it's an easy job for the lord but so that they may see and know that i the lord god reigns I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. So verse 19 reads, And I'm sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. Do you feel that you're in Egypt, do you feel that there's a that um, you're being held back? Do you feel that you're being held down? Okay, let's jump to verse 21. It says, And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and offer and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and you shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters and you shall spoil the egyptians so they're going to exit Egypt. Therefore, we're in the book of Exodus. I believe that's what Exodus means. Um, exit. Okay. So they're going to exit. The Lord is going to work, as you will read, his wonders. And um, Pharaoh is eventually going to let them go. But before that, many events are going to happen as is happening now many events are going to happen so um again i pose the question is this not egypt and i'd like you to stay with me and see where i'm going let's jump to exodus chapter six Okay, chapter 6 and just a couple of verses. 
we're going to start at verse 5. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. This is the Most High speaking. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. I hope you're paying attention to the words. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob and I will give it to you give it to you for an heritage I am the Lord that is where I'm stopping at verse 8 but did you see are you crying out to the Lord Israel are you seeking the Lord are you asking the Lord of course, this event that I'm reading here is past, but there's a second one coming up. Are you paying attention? Okay, so the next, um, let me jump now over to, so here is Israel, the tribes. They're crying out to the Lord. The Lord says, I hear their groanings and their they're there hoping for a rescue. And rescue is coming. The Most High is rescuing them. But he's doing it his way. In his timing. Okay. Now. When you hear me. Re hear the reading of bondage. do you, Are you feeling it? Are you seeing it? Or is it so subtle that. You're casting a blind eye to it. Let me now jump over to chapter 7 and um, we're going to go to verse 14. Okay, so the, here's the Lord giving Moses some instructions for Pharaoh. The Pharaohs of today's, day, of today's generation they are your presidents and your prime ministers. They're, the Bible refers to them as pharaohs and kings. These are them. They're called prime ministers and presidents. Okay? So here's the Lord giving, instructing, giving Moses instructions for Pharaoh. Verse 14 in chapter 7 reads, And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Now get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out unto the waters, and when thou shalt stand by the river's brink, against he come, and the rod which was turned to a serpent, shall thou take in thine hand and thou shalt say unto him the lord god of the hebrews has sent me unto you saying let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness and behold hitherto you will you would not hear thus saith the lord in this thou shalt know that I am the Lord, behold, I will smite with the rod that is in my hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Egyptians shall loathe to drink of the waters of the river. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. So that's verse 19. And you'll see all the way through to from verses from verse 20 all the way through to chapter 11 and verse 5 up to verse 5 or all the way of the entire book um, chapter 11 you'll see the plagues you'll see the plagues that the Most High has allowed on Egypt because Pharaoh is not letting the children of Israel go, the Hebrew children. Now, based on what's happening in our world today, I'm still wondering, do you see it? Do you feel it? Is this not Egypt? Okay. Now, I'm jumping over to the book of Deuteronomy. And I'm going to chapter 28. Chapter 28. Now you'd have to read. It, I, I do encourage you to read all the books up until this point for you to totally get it. So you'll see in Exodus how the people were delivered. The Israelites were delivered eventually Pharaoh had to release them of course it was by the hand of the Lord so you'll see how they came out and um, you'll see their still their plight and remember the Lord says so that they may know and see that I am God, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. And yes, the children of Israel came out and they did evil in the sight of the Most High. Of course, they started out great, but then they started to murmur and complain and not give honor to the Lord. And um, a curse was put on them. You know, because you remember I read, um, I think it, yeah, earlier <coughs> into, um, in chapter one there, where the Most High was going to lead them, take them to the promised land. And they did evil in the sight of God. And um, the Lord said, if you do well, this is what you'll have. And if you don't, this is what is going to come upon you. So you'll see here in Deuteronomy and um, all the way to chapter, to the end of the chapter, you'll see the curse that was put upon the children of Israel. Okay. So I'm going to start at verse 63. I do encourage you to read the entire book in order to get it. Verse 63 of chapter 28 reads, And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, 
so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught, and you shall be plucked off the land whither thou goest to possess. And the Lord shall scatter you among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. There you shall serve other gods which neither you nor your fathers have known even wood and stone. It is absolutely important that you pay attention to the words. Many just read and just glide <coughs> over the words and they miss the meaning and they're not looking to the Lord for revelation. This is paramount. They're not destroyed. The descendants of the, the 12 tribes of Israel are still on the face of the earth. Scattered. Okay. Verse 65. And among these nations... Shall you find no ease, neither shall the sole of your foot of your foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night and shall have none no assurance of your life. In the morning you shall say, would to God it was evening. And at evening you would say, would to God it was morning. For the fear of your heart, wherewith you shall fear. And for the sight of your eyes, which thou shalt see. Here is the verse I want you to pay a special attention to. That is why I ask. That is the, 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 the title of this message. Is this not Egypt? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with the ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Chapters prior to chapter 28, you will read and see the scattering of the children of Israel, how they were, of course, in, in Deuteronomy here, they're no longer in Egypt, right? Because they were delivered, but because they, disobe they disobeyed the Lord, they're not following the commandments, they're not honoring the covenant and whatnot. So, the Lord said, I'm going to scatter you all over the earth. Your enemies, they're going to take you in ships and take you to places that you don't know, give you a language that you don't know, give you a God that you don't know, introduce foods to you that you don't know, things that's no good to you. They're going to take you in ships. So you got to read the, ver the chapters prior to verse to chapter 28 to get the entire message and here in chapter in verse 68 of chapter um 28 it is saying and the lord shall bring thee into egypt again with ships remember he said he's going to scatter you and it's ships they're going to take you so this is egypt you're in the Caribbean, you're in Canada, you're in the U.S. You're all over. How did you get there? Because this is not your land. You got there on ships. This is after you got out of Egypt. I am emphasizing this Verse and the, verse 68 of, of Deuteronomy chapter 28. And the Lord shall bring you again into Egypt with ships. 
This is speaking of the scattering. You are in Egypt, brothers and sisters. So if you're in Egypt, you've got to look now and see there's going to be another exodus. But you are in Egypt. I pray that you get this. I pray that you see it. I pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. Let me read verse 68 of chapter 28 again. And the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto you. You shall see no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Were your descendants slaves? Are you in a country that is not your origin? You are in Egypt. You are in Egypt. And the events that are occurring now is leading to the second and final exodus. I know it's a lot to take in. Many will, will under, there are many that will understand and also there's many that will not understand. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and read verse 28. And if you don't get it, you've got to read from Genesis all the way. But mark that verse. And the Lord shall bring thee, bring you into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto you. You shall see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. For bondmen, bondmen, you're in captive, you're slave. And bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. We are in Egypt. And the Most High is preparing to release his children. Final. This is Egypt. A um, couple more um, scriptures. I'm going to jump to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah. Chapter 11. I do encourage you. The only way you will understand and see is if you get in the Bible and you take your time to study. So let's go to, let's start with Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 20 through to 27. This is speaking of a remnant shall return unto the Lord. So there's just so much to for you to understand. Many teach that the tribes are dissolved and they're no longer. But... There's a lot of error there. You got to get in the Bible. And it shall come. So I'm at verse 20 in chapter 10 of Isaiah. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote him. That's sorry. That smote them. But shall stay upon the Lord 
and the Holy One of Israel in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob. Remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel and we're, speak, we're still speaking of the tribes of Israel unto the mighty God. For though my people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption, see that word? Consumption? The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption even determined in the middle of the land. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrians. He shall smite thee with the rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. For yet a little while, and the indignation shall cease, and mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him, and according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb, and as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck, off the Israelites' neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Okay? I trust you will pick up your Bible and read, ladies and gentlemen. There are just so many scripture pointing you to see that you are in Egypt. And that which the Lord has done before, he's going to do it again. And this is the climax of all things. So let me jump to chapter 11. Okay, chapter 11 of Isaiah. Here we go. Verse 11 of chapter 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. Who is his people? Israel, the tribes, the descendants, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nation, a sign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. People are reading and they're just picking out things. The Bible is clear. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west they shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab. And the children of Ammon shall obey them. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river. And shall smite it with the seven streams and make men go over dry shod. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, 
like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. I do encourage you guys to read. I do encourage you. Jump to Isaiah chapter 19. Read all of it. Verses 1 to 25. Pay special attention to verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 29 verses 1 to 21, Ezekiel 30 verses 1 to 26. For the sake of time, I cannot go further. But I want I wanted to bring this here for you to examine and see. Have a look. Have a read. You're smart. The Lord will reveal it to you. Go to the Bible with, an heart, with a heart and a mind that is willing to understand. And he will unravel it to you. We are in Egypt. Many times... People go to the Bible and they literally say the Bible, it's a, they read it as if it's a tale. As if it's a fantastic story with, these, with some gory details and some wonderful details. It is beyond that. We are living the Bible we're in the Bible L we're literally in it the Bible speaks of us it speaks of what is happening right now but many will not see it only a few. Nevertheless, I'm here to encourage, hoping to get that one person to understand, or perhaps, well, maybe not even to understand, but to be encouraged to pick up the instruction manual. This is not a fantastic book of tales. It's written about you. It tells you what was, it tells you where we are presently, and it tells you what is coming. And your lack of interest and engagement is detrimental to you. I emphasize and I tell you again, I'm not wondering, I'm not saying maybe, I am saying we are in Egypt. This is Egypt and we are under the rule of pharaohs, pharaohs right now. And the grip is tightening. And it is the most high. It is by his mighty hand that we will be led out. I trust my words will encourage you to get in the Bible with an open mind. With an open mind. Read it for yourself. Many scriptures I left out because of time. There is just so many. And that is why I encourage you. Time is short. Start from Genesis and go through it. It won't take you forever to read it and for you to see it. But you got to be hungry. 
for the word. You've got to be so hungry for the knowledge that is in here for you to see. And if you've got that hunger, you are going to plow through and you are going to be enlightened. And it's going to help you set you on the right path. It's going to open your eyes. It's going to open your eyes. This is the encourager. Hit the like button, subscribe, share. You are in Egypt. And that which the Lord has done before, he will do. Not he will do, he is going to do it again. Be blessed. This is the encourager.